so a very good afternoon everybody this is the uh, afternoon evening slot of the first day of the presentation of semester 2 students you all are going to make presentations on the european literature published during 1900 or let us say between two world wars first world war and the second world war so around first 50 years of uh, 20th century and how that time has been captured in the literature you all are going to make presentations on the selected text in your syllabus from this uh, time frame uh, and in this slot we will have presentations from uh, let me display the name of names of the students who are going to make presentations here so we have Janvi going to read a presentation on the great Gatsby's themes. Zil Barad on modernism in F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby. Khushbu Makwana on symbolism in The Great Gatsby. Uh, Mayuri Pandya will read on uh, an Indian mythical uh, uh, interpretation. You need to check out your title that you have given uh, there. Yes, Mayuri. Uh, an Indian mythical interpretation of Yetz's The Second Coming, uh, Nehalba on Great Gatsby's uh, characters, uh, Nidhi on representation of jazz age in The Great Gatsby. So there are so many from The Great Gatsby. Yeah? So it seems that you are or more uh, impressed or attracted towards this novel uh, by Fitzgerald. Uh, Nilay on the American dream and the role of women in Great Gatsby. Nero is reading on the second coming poem by W.B. Yeats. Important lines with explanation. Sangeeta on uh, Yeats's poems. And Vachalta will read on deceitful, deceitful traces of power. Deceit, I think T is missing there. Deceitful traces of power. On analysis of the decadence of Tom Buchanan, that is again from The Great Gatsby. Uh, and uh, you all have submitted your presentations in Google Classroom uh, and you will be evaluated also here with the help of uh, a, a rubric uh, in uh, different criteria like a subject knowledge, organization of your ideas and arguments, elocution, art of clear speaking, uh, mechanics of writing, your eye contact, body language, enthusiasm, uh, citation and originality, uh, as well as uh, the style of citation, uh, MLA citation, which we expect you to follow uh, while making your presentation. That, on that, we will try to evaluate your work uh, uh, in Google Classroom with the help of this rubric. Your, all your presentations are also being submitted in Google Classroom. You will also be giving uh, self and peer evaluation of uh, uh, all the peer group uh, at the end of uh, the day. So let us start uh, with the first uh, uh, presentation now and uh, invite Janvi to start with her uh, presentation.
this visible. Good afternoon. <laughs> I am Nakum Chanvi. My topic is the Great Gatsby uh, theme. The Great Gatsby, written by the F. Scott uh, Fizzlehead. The bone is the September 24, 1896, St. Paul, Miston, U.S. The Fizzlehead was a 20th century American short story writer, novelist. Although he completed four novels and uh, more than the 150 short, uh, short stories in his lifetime, he is perhaps the best reminded uh, of this third novel of the great guest bee. the great guest bee is the widely considered considered the great american novel he died uh, december 21st 1940 hollywood california about the novel the great guest bee is a novel written by american writer uh, f Scott of his delight said in the uh, Zeb's phase uh, Zeb's is on the Long Island uh, near New York City. In the novel, despite the first uh, person narrated the Nick Carraway in instructions with a mystery mil millionaire, the J. Gatsby and Gatsby Obens reunit with the his uh, former lover, Daisy. <laughs> the novel is the popular and the scholar attention. Contemporary scholar uh, emphasize the novel, emphasize the novel's treatment of the social class. Inherited uh, the self mode wealth, rest, and uh, environment list. And, and, in the, uh, and in the novel, the Gatsby, uh, the, uh, the Gatsby, uh, the main character and the main character and these loved women, the uh, Daisy, uh, the <clears throat> the Gatsby character is uh, is the good uh, good, but the novel uh, the novel is the the no uh, the novel right the Nick Carraway, uh, the character is the close uh, see see and the interpret the character. The moral of the novel that is the American dream ultimately uncreatable. The theme, the decline of the American dream in the 1920, the hollowness of the upper class, class, the American dream, love and the marriage. The first theme, the decline of the American dream in the 19th second. In the theme, yeah, in the theme is uh, the main theme in the novel. The woman and the man love, uh, woman and the man love. In the incorporations of the large and uh, less of romantic uh, scope. In the theme is, uh, in the theme is the month of during summer, 1992. It, uh, it, in the theme is a geographical era. In the Long Iceland, the new, uh, Long Iceland, the New York. New York and the great uh, guest be the symbol uh, symbol like uh, the American the um, American the whole the uh, whole the part, uh, particularly the classes uh, class and the youth the, the second the first world war uh, the guest uh, guest be and the Nick era is the American dream and the youth of the young generation to become the American. Uh, Youth of the young generation, American big uh, American dream. In uh, in the American dream, the astrology, the families of the wealthy and the newly uh, richest uh, indirections and the uh, spectacles editions. In uh, in the theme of the two uh, became the new richest and the alcoholic the drugs and the became the rich of uh, rich and the men the guest be and the in the in the second of the uh, born in uh, richest person Tom and uh, Daisy in in <clears throat> in the theme is the is the Nick and uh, in the character of the Gatsby and the social tendency Nick and uh, Gatsby who fight the world war around the world war first in uh, 1980 is a uh, new found 
newfound and uh, newfound and the, the richest after the world war the we uh, came a richest uh, gets me in the addition of the uh, in the theme the addition of the play uh, of the place and the object of the the eyes of the uh, eyes of the doctor uh, eyes of the uh, doctor eyes of the doctor il ilberg the best uh, experiment in the idea and in the eyes of these uh, symbolized in the novel the the second theme hollowness of the upper class in the two different class of the in the theme is the first is the west tech and the second is the uh, east tech in in the first is the major topics uh, explain the get guest be social of wealthy uh, specifically and in the newly minted millionaire on the second 20 different to the re relate of the old astronomy in the country riches family in the novel west egg uh, west egg the represent the new represent the new richest uh, uh, person and the uh, west leg is the bone uh, in the richest person tom and uh, daisy in the contracts between the two uh, two eggs uh, the first uh, the first s is the s x is the the richest man is the great test uh, stability and the, his uh, behavior is hurting hurting others men and uh, men and others people in the in the upper class upper class uh, upper class people has uh, no except the uh, est eggers est egger people because of the he's est egger people he became uh, the richest no he's the born uh, no he's the bo uh, born he's the uh, richest the est egg and the west the est egger for the example of the Guest uh, is the good quality like the loyalty and, and love. The guest be love uh, love is the Daisy and the, he uh, he he's a Mary he Mary a uh, Daisy, but uh, he Mary uh, he Mary Daisy. But the after uh, complete uh, after the end of the novel, the the guest uh, the guest accident the Martin is the blame. On our end, the uh, kill, kill uh, and uh, gets be killing the uh, George, uh, George and uh, George. And the second is the Daisy and uh, Tom is the uh, Eastern uh, people. The quality is uh, flatness and selfness. Is the uh, trait uh, is flatness is the uh, is the many of the abilities and the uh, and the he was the richest and the how money is. Uh, um, is uh, money and, and uh, allow them to remove themselves from the tragedy in not only the psychology and the physically both of the tragedy the third is a class in the unit of the world the great gates be class uh, influence all except of the whole and the especially low uh, Martin, uh, Martin uh, mentioned his with regard uh, to her husband George, whom he uh, who is the except uh, better the is better the great grand and the uh, hence the greater pro uh, protest. I I thought uh, I thought he knew uh, knew sometimes about the uh, grip ring, but he was uh, he wasn't fit to lick my shoes. Similarly, Gatsby pursuit of uh, Daisy is born up with glass. In the end of the book, the class denies a declare which one will never came to be a Daisy and Gatsby. In the final chapter in the novel, the Nick school the Tom and Daisy is uh, careless people and who shame up things and uh, let other people clean up the mess of the head. Because of the Nix realized the Tom and uh, Daisy to uh, to went out the other new new city in, in death of the uh, Gatsby is not uh, not the dead uh, 
in case we take things and no no news uh, of uh, no news uh, give the tom and uh, daisy he went to a new city and a new house uh, the american dream the american dream is the major theme in in the in the novel the gatsby is uh, himself uh, himself on a uh, embodiment of the american dream the gates the gatsby dream is the richest person in the uh, america is a dream the gatsby is born on a poor family and and the and the poor family and he, he dream is the became the highest richest person in the america american he became, he became uh, he be, uh, he became the richest uh, person in the in, in the america but his uh, his dream is not uh, uh, fulfilled uh, gets me he's the uh, he's the wealthy and successfully financial gets me but this uh, not accept that the the est eggers is expect the richest person in the gets me love and marriage in the in the novel uh, is the two marriage uh, two marriages uh, love less marriages the first of all tom and uh, daisy and second the uh, martin and george wilson the first of tom and daisy was because of uh, mary was the is the richest and the uh, class uh, is the richest in class in the uh, daisy and tom, uh, tom marries before the tom his uh, affair the uh, martin and the uh, one year uh, one year go to the uh, affair with uh, martin and the uh, martin who uh, uh, married a uh, uh, george uh, george because of the thought a uh, gentleman and uh, gentleman and uh, and the his uh, class uh, class status uh, because of the marriage and the, uh, the love theme is the gatsby loves the daisy and he get uh, married uh, but uh, daisy not uh, get married with uh, with uh, gatsby and after after the complete the world uh, world war he is the married uh, uh, married, uh, married uh, daisy is a uh, tom and uh, he Tom and Daisy is realized that the Tom is uh, cheating, uh, cheat about the affair of the Martin, and uh, and he realized and the uh, and in the in the novel is the Nick in the novel Nick love uh, uh, Jordan Baker thought thought is the book uh, the though their uh, relation with his uh, moments of uh, warm. Or not kindly, uh, kindly, and both the uh, both the uh, uh, both the practiced uh, genuinely seem he uh, seem is the emotionally and uh, emotionally and uh, Nick Nick is uh, distant. I was not actually in in love. Uh, Nick recalls, but I felt uh, scored to uh, tender of curiosity. Such the tender curiosity. may be the closest thing to love uh, in the entire novel this is my reference thank you yes so who is asking question raise your hand so i can make you a uh, uh, full screen and then you ask a question okay uh, have you typed your question you have to type your question so i can display your question also okay sangeeta has typed so let me display his question i think uh, somebody has logged out anybody yes there vidhi now do it yourself but do sikhi jao hove but do jate karta now you are the leaders there are no seniors now you are the seniors and you have to teach now to the new students who will come in the month of june okay first sangeeta uh, okay i am making you full screen come in the center so you are visible okay yes you can ask a question jan bhai my question is why the american dream is unrealistic in the novel 
in the in the novel the american dream unrealistic uh, because of the uh, according to the me the gatsby is the became the richest but not the fulfill is the uh, dream is the Amer- is the dream is the american the richest person but is not born in a rich uh, rich family is the born is the poor family so that uh, the dream american dream is not uh, unreal So, Jani, my question is, uh, do you think the character of Daisy is getting hollowness? If yes, then how? You think character of Daisy is getting hollowness? If yes, then how? Yes, uh, the character uh, Daisy is uh, hollowness. because of the daisy uh, daisy before uh, marriage uh, daisy uh, before marriage love with uh, gatsby and but he did not marry uh, not marry the gatsby because of his not uh, uh, richest person and the status in the class the is the get uh, married with tom and after the after the meet in gatsby he 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 get with uh, again again the uh, gets be uh, but not the end in the novel it the uh, daisy character is uh, not of uh, not is the good not is the good Bec- uh, because of the uh, the gets be that not to come uh, not to come uh, daisy he meet and uh, Okay, the next presentation now. Are my slides visible? Good afternoon, everyone. I am Zil Barat, and in the in the paper, the twentieth century literature, nineteen hundred to World War Two, I am going to present modernism in the Great Gatsby. This is this is my information, and 
the content we are going to deal in this presentation is what is modernism fits gerald a modernist modernism in the great gatsby and conclusion starting with the, the explanation of the term by m h abram in the glossary of the literary term the term modernism is widely used to identify new and distinctive feature in the subjects forms concepts and styles of literature and the other art in the early decades of the 20th century but especially after world war 1 the movement modernist modernist movement originated in the 19th century and early 20th century after world war 1 after world war 1 the society society was in the horror still uh, due to the all the effect of world war 1 the technology was advancing the globalization was happening and all the new society was emerging and which gave rise to the reassessment of the society and this reassessment made the writers think to write something new about their about their society instead of the traditional way of writing so basically modernism is breaking the traditional way of life or writing and bringing something new in writing and way of life Fitzgerald as a modernist Fitzgerald frequently visited Europe and was brief befriended with the artists who were among the lost generation which inspired him to write about the write the genre of modernism the novels of Fitzgerald were satire satiric and were rejecting to the ideas of love success and happiness he blended the intense symbolism and figurative language of modernism The Great Gatsby, The Great Gatsby explores the emptiness of material wealth and the death of American dream, perfect depiction of the jazz age and the post-war situation in 1920s. These are the characteristics of modernist movement or a modern age: blend imagery and themes, absurdism, non-linear narratives, stream of consciousness, individualism, experimentation. symbolism absurdity formalism modernism in the great gatsby the novel great gatsby is a modernist novel because it uses various modernist technique modernist techniques like loss of control alienation corruption of the american dream breaking societal rules restlessness and fragmented writing the major three modernity we find in the novel we will discuss that first modernity in the narration technique the narr the narration in the novel is first person narration which provides very limited perception towards the novel it gives us insight into the novel through one single window we think see and understand only through the one person and in this novel the narrator is nick carevy through whom through which through whom we are thinking seeing and understanding the situations happening in the novel the difference in the traditional narration and the modern narration is in the traditional novels the narrator was omniscient narrator a god like who knew everything about all the characters all the situation and the mindset of all the characters while in the modern this this method of narration was completely broken we get incomplete information in the narration if we don't question through different pers perspectives and it provides only single window view the another modernity in the narration we see in this novel is second degree narrator nick carever was not present during the love affair of daisy and gatsby and even not present during the childhood of gatsby these things of gatsby's life were narrated by the john baker and henry c gates father of gatsby This type of narration is known as metadigesis narration. The another modernity is seen in the opening of the character. Throughout the novel we see some mystical aura around the character. The character is relieved, revealed. The rear face of the character is known at the end or very later when we are ready. For example, if we take the character of a Gatsby in the beginning, we don't know whether he is an ethical man or not at the end we realize that he is a wealthy man but through bootlegging which is not ethical in the life 
and which is known very later in the novel that the character is not the way we thought in the beginning or the way we read about him in the beginning then modernity is symbols is it there are three symbols we are discussing the eyes of ekelberg green light and the valley of ashes the eyes of ekelberg is a billboard which are symbolic to the eyes of god if we see in the na- traditional novel or a narration the eyes of god is a abstract thing and we talk about someone is saying we don't have anything symbolic that the, this thing is looking after us but here billboard in the technological era in the time of globalization billboard is a symbol is used as a symbolic as the eyes of god then green light light came into existence after technology here green light is used as a symbol of hope while in the traditional writing we see hope is a rising of sun or something new a new year is seen as a hope valley of ashes is seen as moral and social decay if we go to the traditional literary work or a narration we see the moral and social decay through some incidents happening in the life of the people but here the valley of ashes plight of the poor is a symbolic to moral and social decay other the supplementary modernist technique technique in the novel are loss of control and restlessness which is seen in the character of tom buchanan he loses his control when he is having an apartment party with mrs martel and mrs martel is taking the name of daisy in spite of refusal of her tom and tom slaps to martel which shows his loss of control and restlessness when the accident happened by the daisy and wilson was having doubt wilson was having doubt but tom gave in a restless mood he blamed to gatsby that gatsby is the one who did an accident then uncertainty and alien alienation is seen in daisy buchanan Bu- daisy was uncertain about having relationship with whom gatsby an emotional relationship or to secure herself with the wealth with tom and alienation is seen uh, she is having a happy married family he, she is having the daughter she is still she feels alone and she is going towards the gatsby for emotional relationship then this illusion man corruption of american dream breaking societal rules and restlessness is also seen in j gatsby's character j gatsby is breaking the societal rules of a structured family and moving towards the city leaving his rural family and becoming wealthy and losing the family and trying to make a fake fame fake standard of life then fragmenting fragmented writing and non linear narrative which we have seen in the narration technique is also a modernist technique used in this novel these all were the techniques which we saw so in the novel through reading but in the end of the novel in chapter 9 we also get a reference of a spanish modernist painter el greco a 16th century painter Nick Carraway is taking the reference of this painting this painting's original name is view of toledo but nick is using night paint painting of el greco he uses this painting's reference while he is talking about the east egg because he is looking at the east egg as a place of distortion after the gatsby's death he is in trauma and thinks that east egg is the reason for the gatsby's gatsby's death in the conclusion i would like to con- conclude with the with the write up of hugh, hugh holman modernism is a strong and conscious break with traditional forms and techniques of expression modern implies a historical discontinuity a sense of alienation of loss and of despair it not only rejects history but also the society of whose fabrication history is a record this quote is completely applicable to the novel which we discussed as a modernist novel these are my work cited thank you
question whose turns are there who is going to ask janvi and vachalta okay so type your questions here okay ah. okay by the time i ask them to type the questions just a minute uh, a few uh, observations from there where something needs to be improved also before we come to the questions uh, i'm sharing a, a screen here so in the work cited uh, uh, things here you can see that first uh, amazon is cited now amazon is a book selling website so that is not to be cited so if there is no online version of a book then print version that can be cited but uh, amazon uh, cannot be cited as a reference site it is a shopping site uh, then this uh, uh, metropolitan museum citation is given in in text uh, it is referred as el grecos so it should go with el greco so if greco is the last word then it should go at g alphabetical greco l and then metropolitan museum reference should come and this is for everybody uh, those who want who are interested in learning about citations otherwise even at the end of the fourth semester you just have to tell that i i don't know anything about citation that is what you will uh, have to say if you don't learn uh, uh, the things okay? uh then uh last one poetics today yeah? now that uh, uh when i open it comes to this site but what exactly from this is cited that is not getting clear so from a journal normally an article is cited or reference so that article somebody is a writer of the article huh? or editor of the journal so their surname name is always knowable we can always find that so that we have to see so without surname or name journals uh, uh, are not cited normally there are editors or uh, writers of an individual papers huh, in that so that also uh, is uh, a problematic uh, there okay? this was el greco's uh, reference from this site but uh, you have to see that how you cite eh? what is in text that is to be connected with at the end of the text so in text it is el greco referred here then it goes in that way uh, like here uh, this hugh holman so you will look at h in the citation that what is holman and then you reach to the references eh, there so work citations are uh, are the the map Are, are it is the map so that a reviewer wants to see what you have cited wants to verify whether you have cited properly you have referred to a good source or not for that it is now if it doesn't lead to the right place it is a wrong citation that is a simple thing that you can keep in mind that how it should be uh, the right way of putting the things okay, okay now let us come to uh, the questions So who is asking first? Vachalta, okay. Zil, what is uh, what is non-linear narration? A linear narration, which takes, a, for example, if we are taking a example of a character of a Gatsby, we get to know about his present, then future, and then past. Then after his death, we come to know about his past. That is a non-linear. linear is we come to know from childhood then his teenage then youth then old age and then his death but here we don't get linear narration or linear information about gets me first we get to know about the present being a wealthy person then we come to know about his youth time when he was with dan cody then we come to know about the childhood how he studied and the way he used to live his Like that, it creates a non-linear narration. We don't get anything in the line or a connection. Is Janvi? You have not typed your question. Yes, type yours so we can. I can display the question. 
and we also can know whether you know the correct english or not so there was enough time uh, to do that so everybody be careful when your turn comes that were those were the instructions given before we started live streaming so that during live streaming we don't have to pinpoint all these things and it is not recorded or people who are watching they may say that uh, what kind of students are there that such simple things also needs to be repeated time and again and we have to learn huh? we, uh, this is a process of learning how to ask questions how to improve the language of asking questions uh, interrogative sentences are to be prepared which is not an easy task uh, though it is uh, a school grammar but still even college or postgraduate students are not good in uh, simple sentences interrogative sentences also okay? so by the time janvi is typing uh, the question we have to keep on speaking something the things are going live you can't make things go very silent you have to say something so in presentation there are multiple things which are aimed at multiple learning objectives we are aiming at it is not only that you make slides or you face a camera or we do live streaming it's not only technology there is lots of language component which we are aiming to teach or to learn which normally you are not able to see you are not able to see the language part that we are working on to improve you are able to see only the technology part and you have just concentrated that there is a stream yard at the end of the day you will remember stream yard you will not remember what is interrogative sentence you will not remember how we work on how to frame better questions how to do better citations lots of things are there but somehow uh, what we have experienced is that students remember technology more not the language or literature part and which is something that we have to keep on pinpointing that it is not only stream yard it is just the the sadhan as nimesh has very rightly said yesterday that it is just a vehicle which is very glamorous so we are attracted more towards the vehicle rather than what we have to do and Uh, language literature citations research based writing that is missed out from your feedback from your thinking from your imagination so when you sit down to do something very creative that doesn't strike you it is not striking you that well this also is a part of our study this also should become somewhere uh, a kind of uh, a symbol of representing the totality of our activities okay? okay so uh, janvi has typed the question now you can yes how did f scott fitzgerald impact modernism uh modernism is a movement which was going in the society so i could i feel that fits which fits that fitzgerald didn't impact to modernism but fitzgerald was under the impact of modernism and uh, through his writing he was trying to show through using the modern techniques he was showing us the society in his work okay next one now
Sim. Esquisito. Good afternoon, all. Uh, I am Shmoo Makwana. Today I will present uh, the symbolism in the Great Gatsby. The Great Gatsby uh, is a novel uh, written by uh, Peggy Scott Fitzgerald. Uh, he, he was he born in 1896 and uh, died in uh, 1940. Uh, the Great Gatsby uh, published in uh, 10th April 1925. Uh, it was a tra tragedy. It uh, sets in the jazz as jazzes on a long Iceland near New York City. First symbol is the green light. The green light symbolizes for a hope, dream, and the future. It uh, it uh, represents Gatsby's ho uh, hope hopes and dreams about Daisy. Everyone has something that they long and reach for that uh, is just off uh, in the dis uh, distance. That is the green light. Uh, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in the tra traffic light, uh, green means go. So, uh, so it gives Gatsby uh, the go ahead to pursue his dream of Daisy. At the end of Daisy's door, and visible from Gatsby's mansion. Second is the eyes of T.H. Eckbert. Uh, these eyes are from uh, a bill billboard that looks over Wilson, uh, Wilson's garage. The eyes are always mentioned whenever uh, Nick is there. They look over the situation objectively but offer a a kind of judgment of the characters and their actions. George Wilson uh, re refers to them as the eyes of a god who sees everything. Third is the belly of the ashes. Uh, it will symbolize uh, the cor corruption of the 1920th century. Ash ashes cover uh, everything in the area. Switzerland described uh, it. Uh, it as a dismal and wasteland. Nick crosses uh, deliberately to the other side of the train when he passes the valley of the ashes and he wants uh, to get away from the corruption. Uh, this one is a uh, Gatsby's parties. The parties is symbolized for the glam glamorous life, lifestyle of the roaring twenties the flesh is pending of the someone with new money seeking to impress those who will never accept him and the corruption of the American dream. Uh, the automobile. The automobile uh, symbolized for the danger. Uh, the uh, drunk man doesn't even realize that the tires has fallen off his car. Jordan says that she doesn't have to be a careful driver. Uh, the heat, the heat is uh, uh, narrated in a uh, seventh, uh, uh, seventh chapter. The heat symbolizes uh, for a uh, trauma and tension. Uh, Switzerland emphasized the heat throughout the entire chapter, where the affairs are discovered and Mattel is killed. Uh, the color of the symbol. The white color is the most significant to the story. It symbolizes for purity, innocence, and uh, royalty. But Fizzerland used this color to underline the inside of the wealthy people. Uh, white, white uh, used for Daisy. Uh, Daisy is the uh, Daisy is a uh, name. Uh, name. Uh, it will symbolize a flower. It uh, its peels are white but its uh, inside is uh, it's uh, yellow uh, and the other side eggs uh, uh, eggs are also uh, also white in outer side but uh, it was uh, yellow in uh, inner side the people who uh, who live in both east and west are symbolic uh, of the place and that have daisy tom and jordan are old money people they wear white clothes live in a white house but they are immoral inside they have no scruples 
yellow. Uh, yellow color is symbolize a desire for wealth and all money. Pizzolan attempts to illust uh, illustrate that rich people are uh, rotten inside, like the uh, daisies. But uh, no way rich people are also inside, uh, also yellow inside, like Gatsby. Gatsby's yellow car, a symbol uh, for, of the wealth that money can obtain. And this is my references. Kushbu, my question is, what's the difference in the Tom's apartment party and Gatsby's huge throne party? What is the difference in Tom's apartment party and Gatsby's huge party? apartment party is for the What is the uh, central symbol in the novel? Green light is the central symbol of the novel. Hello everyone, this is uh, semester 2 and uh, today I am dealing with uh, paper number 106, 20th century literature, uh, 1900 to World War II and this is my presentation. This is the table of content. Introduction of author. My topic is an Indian myth, uh, mythical interpretation in WBH's poem, The Second Coming. Introduction of author, WBH's uh, that uh, some biographical uh, information given in my PPT and also that some information I uh, giving uh, to my audience and that is his father was a lawyer and also he was a portrait painter. WBH made his debut as an a poet in 1887 but in his early period he was a dramatic production outweighted his poetry along with a playwright lady Georgie he founded the Irish theater, which later became a uh, Abbey theater. And he was the chief, uh, chief play writer in the Abbey theater. His plays are often based on Irish legend and are full of that mysticism and spiritualism. About the poem, second coming poem, we can interpret in a various way. We can read in that uh, pandemic. We can read with an uh, war poetry. And I am that uh, interpret with an Indian mythology. 
the second uh, coming poetry we uh, interpret with it various ways the second coming uh, refers to the idea jesus will return to the earth earth towards the end of time bring justice and order and this is not only the christianity but uh, this is that law of uh, uh, every re uh, religion and universally we can see that every uh, religions uh, god there is the idea of that second coming or god in uh, our uh, in uh, hinduism we can see that 10 avatars and we uh, in nowadays we can we uh, wait for that kalki avatars and there are 10 avatars of that our uh, uh, lord vishnu uh, one of them krishna says in a bhagavad gita uh, chapter number 4 uh, 4 verse number 7 uh, uh, there is the shlok yada yada hi dharmasya glani bhavati bharata adbhutanam adharmasya tadatmanam sujamyaham uh, that is the mean if uh, increase of that evilness and uh, religions are less i am uh, 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 with, uh, born with a human being and uh, i am uh, again that uh, spread a religion's belief he believed in the complex uh, set of idea to do with uh, gyres increasing the corn shaped sprinkles representing various element historical and individual force offering that transitions into the new worlds uh, we can see that historical with an world war individual with a world war, uh, second coming with a philosophical and religion aspect we can uh, see that poem in a various way the second section yet represent that distributing image of that Spanish out of that spirit, uh, spiritual mundi, which literally means spirit of that world, outer, uh, but there uh, refers to the yet's belief that every mind is linked, a single vast intelligence. This is a glimpse of a new order after 2000 years. Christianity is not a comforting one, yet conclude by a wondering about the nature of his uh, rough beast. That a uh, shallow trees toward a Bethlehem to be born. This is on that religions of the Christianity and that uh, another uh, we can uh, see that the human body with an lion head with interpret with an uh, Indian or a Hinduism. A myth may be an encapsulate a man to the cardinal values of virtue that character uh, characterized and certain culture. A despite is a complexity, a myth is a simple and down, uh, down to earth tool. It is a tool since it aims at understanding that mysteries at the uh, growing the world, seeing it attempts that appears and a portrayal fe uh, fear that may terminate humans, a terminated creature doomed to suffer. Sheen, most importantly, it convey the general truth at the characterized and a particular culture in our our day to life uh, day to day life and our childhood we can uh, listen that if any uh, baby wants to go outside their home their mother or, and uh, grandmother tells that if you go outside then a sa uh, saint was uh, kidnapped you and our gujarati sentence in a we connect with a mythical concept that sita going to outside outside his home and ravan as uh, as the sa uh, saint he was uh, kidnapped her that a uh, mythical it's uh, like sometimes that fear on human if you want that uh, someone believe in your uh, 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 believe you in you or if you want something hiding them then you create a mythical concept or mythical story around that and there because of the fear they not uh, use their logics their questioning and anything not even in in, her, in his brain if that uh, anything in a mythical then always we think that okay this is right and our grandparents also not uh, wants to we are kind of questioning on on uh, other people that uh, this is not a right question instant attempt have a result in a countless myth that have a gradually enriched universal culture WPH's poetry is a rich and a mythical symbol and imaginary. He glanced that a religion and a philosophy of different culture and tradition to give is a poetry. Avure an aura of that profounding his uh, seminal poetic work, The Second Coming, 
can be read in the light of ancient uh, Indian myth of Narsima Altar, the home animal hybrid incarnation of uh, Lord Vishnu. The idea of the second coming, Christ sound very like, uh, like the concept of the uh, rain, uh, reincarnation and that uh, this is the two image of reincarnation and there, uh, there is the one interesting cartooning images. Uh, I want to you all to see and read that it is very interesting. And uh, we know that Narsima Avatar, uh, we all are know, but I am give that small information about uh, it. That Hiranyakashipu uh, is that uh, king of that earth, and he was uh, having a one uh, Vardhan in a uh, Sanskrit Vardhan. Uh, uh, no one can kill him, not a human, not animal, in not uh, kill them a day and night. Not uh, in outside, not in inside. Any weapon, not kill him. And he, uh, he was a strict ruler of no one can worship of Lord Vishnu. And his own son, Prahlada, was a worship of Lord Vishnu. And he was a highly torture uh, on his own son. And at the end of that torture, uh, Narsima Avatar will be killed uh, Hiranyakarshipu. And this is the connection with that second coming. Uh, there is the human body with a la lion face. Uh, la uh, this is that uh, I am interpreted in with uh, Narsima Altar. It's the second coming exhibits the coming of an anti uh, Christ uh, Christ that will shake humanity out of his uh, stony sleep from 20th century. The figure is that a uh, synapsis will lion body and the head of a man. This is the for uh, for a shishious creature with incurrent to the set the things right in the chaotic world where things are falling apart as a center cannot hold them together. The story of Narsima Avatar finds echo in the second coming eight's poem paint a grim feature of the modern society where the ceremony of innocence is a drawing. Similarly, the uh, similarly the innocence of uh, devout to of God like Prahlada is also tortured by his father. The chaos and uh, mayhem of the modern world or energy of the Hiranyakarshipu region could have been uh, overcome only by a uh, omni, omnipotent power acquiring the uh, spirit of not just a human world but also of that non-human. And that also that a mythical reference I uh, remember this uh, where, uh, we study that play of waiting for Godot and that play Estragon said one line peoples are bloody ignorant ape and the context of Bible and this is the also we can interpret that if a mythical and a religions book context people are not used their logics and uh, another one in uh, also in for that waiting for a Godot if we connect Godot with a God there is the uh, uh, connection with that second coming they are both are waiting for a border and the people of waiting for a second coming or any avatar or a Jesus Christ or anyone. They believe on that. Conclusion, the symbol according to AIDS uh, originated in the poet's mind thought a divine inspiration, but it ascends when a man writes any work of genius, invents some creative action, is it not because some knowledge of power has come into a mind from beyond his mind? It's called up by an image as I think. But our image must be given to us. We cannot choose them deliberately. If a poet wants uh, something creative and uh, their mind was not uh, in a structuralism that uh, this, this image I can use in that, that poem. Their mind has, there is the spontaneous flow of that uh, thought and imaginary. As I'm, uh, these are my references. Thank you. So, Mayuri, my question is, do we find any biographical reference which shows yes relationship with India or visit to India as we find many Indian philosophical reference in his poetry? Yeah. In modern time, uh, we can see that uh, in, in this time, India have a colonized 
and uh, many uh, spiritual and uh, Indian philosophy are uh, work in that Western tradition. And uh, many of writers read that and uh, understand that. And uh, if we see at the context of WB8, there are many poetry WB8 which uh, belongs to the Indian philosophy and that some idea or imaginary or he can use that Hinduism on that. I this the poem, the second coming, and with a uh, question. Why uh, does the poem, the second coming, end with a questioning? Because according to me, this is the hope we can see in every religion that someone coming or second one coming for uh, our uh, religion's belief or uh, uh, he or she can free to us with that world. Okay, who is the next one now? There is one more question that uh, Mayuri you can refer to and you can ask, you can answer in the comment Mayuri. So check the comment and then the same one is it? That's the same is it? Okay, fine. Okay, yeah. Okay, by the you uh, who is now, uh, you said the things, you have to also check your camera focus properly. Don't share the screen right now. Okay, no problem. But just keep things ready for sharing. Uh, in this uh, presentation, which is made by Mayuri, yeah. there are still more chances for exploring uh, a very good resource. So if you just Google, then also you will get a very interesting resources to be cited and referred also like it should not be only shallow uh, way of looking but so if you see this article by shamsul islam i'm sharing that screen that is the influence of eastern philosophy on yetz's later poems poetry uh, so this can be uh, something interesting you can find from this article which is published by duke university press uh, then there is this uh, another interesting work, W.B. Yeats and Indian Thought. This is the another work, Snezna Debic uh, work, published by Cambridge Scholars Publishing. Remember our quest, our workshop that we have done last time, it was to see how to reach to qualitative research work on internet not something that easily comes on the first page remember this carefully so that when we go towards dissertation writing in semester four you do not have that question in your mind that where is quality and what is quality why not this that simple question may not remain in your mind that why we are told not to cite all these things and then what we have to cite for this all these things are you see Asia Society's website, asiasociety.org, uh, Center for Global Education, Influ Indian Influences on Western Literature. That can be cited. And even this work was very interesting by Montclair State University. It was a thesis dissertation project, WB Yates's Construction of India. Ashim Datta as work is there. So uh, our concern is to see that uh, why are we not able to reach to uh, qualitative resources when we make our presentations or assignments. 
uh, and if they will still not be able to reach then in desert region there will be a terrible problem we will go to a very shallow cheap kind of content and we have to keep on telling you that this is not fair this is not good and maybe you will not even understand that what is fair what is good if you will not listen right now and this is for everybody right? it is not only for mayuri it is for everybody but everybody in one or the other way is not able to reach to a quality resource and then make their arguments around those things okay we hope that you will not down everything and subsequently every day and then in the third semester and in the fourth semester the improvement will be seen in your performances yes nehal uh, bhai i think you'll have to lower down camera a little bit okay fine fine no problem that is okay so you can share and start now Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Nehal Bagohil. I am presenting the the Great Gates by characters. Big Carvel, the novel narrator Nick, is a young man from uh, Minnesota who, after being educated at the Yale. and fighting in the world war honest tolerant and inclined to reserve judgment nick often serve as a confidant for those with troubling secrets after moving to west egg a fictional arc of iceland that is a home to the newly rich jay gets b the title characters and protagonist of the novel gatsby is a fabulous wealthy young man living in a gothic mansion in the west egg he is famous for the lavish parties he is throws every every stud, uh, saturday night he meets daisy while training to be an officer in lois while he is uh, fell in uh, fell in love with her daisy butchanam Nick's cousin and the woman gets gets be loves is a young uh, woman is a Lois while be while before the war Daisy was a courted uh, courted by um, a number of officers including the gets be she fell in love with gets be and promised to wait for him Daisy lives with Tom get uh, across from gets by. Tom Buchanan, Daisy, immensely wealthy husband, once a member of Nick Social Club at Yale, powerfully built and hailing from a social solid old family. Tom is an arrogant, hypocritical bully. His uh, social attitude area are loaded with uh, racism and sex, uh, sexism. He has no moral. Column about his own extramarital affair with uh, Mattel. Jordan Becker, Daisy's friend, a woman with whom Nick becomes romantically involved during the course of the novel. 
a comparative wolf for Jordan represent a one of the women of the 1920s cynical voice and self centered Jordan is a beautiful but also a dishonest she cheated in order to win her first wolf tournament and uh, continually bent the bends the truth Martin Wilson Tom's lover who who's a lifeless husband George on a run down garage in the valley of Essex Martin herself processes of fires vitality and desperate looks for a way to improve her situation unfortunately for her she chosen Tom who treated her as a moral object of the, his desire George Wilson, Martin's husband, the lifeless ex exorcist woman of a down out auto shop at the edge of the valley of Essex. George loves and idealizes Martin and the devastated by her affair with Tom. George is consu consumed with grief when Martin is killed. George is comparable uh, to gets beat. in that both are ruined by their unproven love for woman who loves Tom. Mayor Holshire gets gets his friend a prominent figure in organized crime before the event of the novel takes place. Holshire help gets be to make his fortune put legging a uh, illegal liquor his con continued uh, equivalence with gets by suggests that gets be is still evolved in the illegal business hey francis thank you yes who is asking questions Nihal, according to you, which character represents corruption of American dream? Nick Carvey, sir. Which character? Which character represents corruption of American dream? Nick Carvey, sir. American dream. Guys, get the. Uh, Who is asking? Who's who? Yeah, just a minute. Guys, get the. Just a minute. Uh, your question. Or... Let your question comes here first. Okay, now it is. Okay, now you can ask. Guys, guys, uh, get me a mysterious character. So that is a very poor performance huh? nehalba you need to prepare work hard i hope you are understanding that your preparation is not up to the mark and uh, this way if you are going to complete your all four semesters then it will be terrible so concentrate on your studies prepare well everything you should be able to give answer Uh, proper answer correct answer nick caraway cannot be considered as the failure 
there is Jay Gatsby also in the novel as the corruption of American dream. So work hard. Uh, this way it is not going to work. Today is the first day of our presentation. Today is Good afternoon, everyone. Today is the first day of our presentation. Today is my presentation topic is the representation of jazz. Jazz is in the back desk by F. Ford Fitzgerald. First. I can say the, about the author. Francis Scott Fitzgerald was an uh, eminent author of the early 20th century. He was in, born in Minnesota in 1896. Fitzgerald was a uh, bright and talented child, demonstrating a strong interest in literature from a young age. F. Scott Fitzgerald is a prominent novelist and short story writer. His first important book was titled The Slide of Paradise. It was an autobiographical story exploring the concept of the love and greed. His, uh, his second book is the name The Beautiful in the uh, Framed. The, 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 his, his, third first, his third novel is The Great Guest Be. It's uh, published in 1925. The Great Guest Be was an uh, author. Was, the great guest be novel is uh, not his last novel, but he's uh, performed very well. That's why uh, the F. Court Fitzgerald was uh, uh, famous in this era. That's why his his name the that's why he gave the name of uh, the jazz as uh, as as the miracle is the uh, the audience show him a master the audience show him a master chronicle of the jazz is who had managed to craft to the spirit of the time. He died in the 1940. Despite his short life, Fitzgerald greatly contrib contributed the classical literature on a global level. This is the topic. What is jazz is? The first, uh, the, the first about the jazz is the jazz word means a gems and the gems word comes from the comes from the American American history, the historical American dictionary of the James means a spirit and spirit and a voice. The what is the jazz is the Rowling Twenties was also known as the jazz age. Jazz is the jazz age was a term coined by F. Scott Fitzgerald and his collection of the story. The story name is the Stales of the Jazz Age and was a characteristic feature of the 1920s when jazz music and dancing achieved um, immense popularity in the US and uh, influence other parts of the world. The road is 20 is uh, associated with uh, increasing popular, popular popularity of the mass material material materialistic view to the which Fitzgerald objected of many his work. The jazz, the jazz is, is uh, coming for the lavish party. Uh, the party become a uh, numerous parties which were uh, held by wealthy people. And this uh, lavish party we are show in the great guest be movie. The uh, the, prota the protagonist guest be organized the same the lavish party. 
this uh, encourage of this style core of the fitzela's most famous work creating his uh, unrelated atmosphere the lost of generation the lost of generation also come come from the 1920s in a world war the first the lost of generation referred to the generation of writer artist musicians and uh, intellectual of the came of the age during the first world war and the roaring 20s the un unpredict unpredicted carnage on the destruction war stupid this generation of this illusion about the democracy peace and prosperity and many expressed the doubt about the cynicism in their artistic environs this is the most famous generation lost writer F. Scott Fitzgerald, T. S. Eliot, and the most famous earning him is Hemingway. The that time, 1920s, that time, American and African, American and African culture has come. The culture of changes. The African and American culture, jazz music, explored as a popular entertainment in the 1920s. In the broad African American culture, to the white and middle class. In the that time, the Uh, white and black people also collabor- collaborated the some uh, lavish party and sang sang a song the jazz is was a post world war the i i movement in the 1950s boom which jazz music and dance emerged also at the era ended with the outside of great depression of the 1929 the jazz is lives in a american popular culture that time the jazz is the This, that's why the jazz is a uh, become a most popular in the America. The flapper, the change, changes of the cursor. The flapper also comes to comes of that era. The flappers, the young hum, human whose unconventional clothing and propulsive attitude personalizes the free spirit of the roaring twenties of the age. Women noted in the Their flamboyant style of dress, progressive attitude, and modernized morals begin in the capital, capital, capital society during the jazz age. And the dress type of uh, dress code we we can see the the great guest to be uh, novel the daisies look. The portrayal of the jazz age in the guest novel how how related the jazz age and the great. Yeah, the great guest to be novel fitzgerald's most prominent novel that tells the story of wealth and love amid the shifting value of the jazz is the jazz is we say is the suitable background from different plots by the uh, fitzgerald explained its uh, importance of more than just the second the great guest to be the most merely a story with uh, about the wealth and love but the uh, even said the very concept use is the american dream The, however, the another side, the American dreams, is a struggle that success and popularity are the attention through hard work and dedication. In the case, the jazz is the general. The guest guest is a particular. It is a often show that wealth may is undeservedly come from pure luck and even illegal criminal activity. In this, despite the contact with the American dreams, is is the wealthy who were a. Con- accustomed to having anything they desire the jay guest be was a rich person who could afford many pleasure in his life having obtained high status and wealth he guest be designed to be a together with daisy bukana and he was not ready to fail in the face to potential difficulty normally the society moral value would be a significant barrier in this regard but fitzela showed there decreasing role of the charges and the the jgs be as organized the lavish party because of he he made the daisy and he loves daisy and that's why the lavish party he organized and that party he used a uh, jazz music and that we connected in the jazz is this is my reference Yes. Who is asking questions?
what did the jazz age represent? Repeat. What did the jazz age represent? The jazz is is represent to the according to me that that is a guest bees character because the guest bee guest bee throw the the lavish part party from the he made a daisy and that part that part party music use use in a jazz music jazz music that's why the jazz is represent that part. Okay, maybe. According to you, there is any similar age in India, like Jay's age? According to me, I am not seeing that age, but that time... Is it video visible? Yes. Hello everyone. I am Nilay Rathod. I am going to today. I am going to present the American Dream and the role of women in the Great Gatsby. These are my information. In, intro. Fitzgerald, uh, as we know, is the writer that belonged to the lo lost generation because because uh, the, he, uh, it was the it was the era of the uh, post world war 1 he was famous for his de depiction of the jazz as, as he called himself this, this is the term that is believed that uh, he himself is uh, invented this term as uh, he wrote about 1920s about uh, the jazz as uh, it was an age of miracle it was an age of art it was an age age of excess and it was an age of satire in his mind the jazz the jazz music is the only thing that he, he considered best characterizing this uh, this decade decade this fitzgerald uh, had many titles in his mind including under the dreamart trimalcio under the red white and blue but uh, the great Yes, B was the name that he was never satisfied, but though he, it was published by this name. What is the American dream? As a Oxford Dictionary defines that American dream is the ideal that every citizen of the United States should have an equal opportunity to achieve success and prosperity through hard work, determination and initiative. The first work that uh, that ref referred to this uh, term American Dream appeared in 1931 by J.T. Adams no in J.T. Adams' novel Epic of America. According to him, life should be better and richer and fuller of everyone, anyone, with offer opportunity for each according to ability to or achievement. As Nick uh, notes uh, in the novel that has while willing eager surf as they have been obstinating by the peasantry like uh, gatsby was not satisfied with his previous life that is that he was born a peasant through it but through his hard work but that is in the wrong direction he he, he got the, the success but through bootlegging and which is not a moral 
morally a good uh, thing to do this is the video that i want to share people in the united states still want to be part of the american dream story of success but what actually is the american dream and is it still attainable traditionally the dream has been associated with a successful career wealth and home ownership popular conceptions of the american dream also focus on the ability to achieve more success in one's parents because in some people think that the opportunity to realize the dream is a time yet the results of the ami survey in society suggest something different Significantly more people believe that the freedom to live their lives as they choose and the ability to have fulfilling family lives are more essential to the dream than home ownership, wealth, and having a better quality of life than their parents. We found that about 8 in 10 Americans believe that they are living the dream or are on their way to achieving it, and only 16% of people say that becoming wealthy is essential to the American dream. This is good news for Americans today. Our results show that people still believe that family and community matter, and that the majority of Americans believe that. American dream is in their reach. Is the American dream still alive for you? Let us know in our poll. Also, let us know what other topics you'd like our scholars to cover in six seconds. Well, as this video suggests that uh, American dream is something that uh, everybody believes that is different for everybody. So it is something like the this the talk that everybody asks. Like, why are you clinging to life? And then, like, the answer to that is, like, someone was, uh, someone is living life for money, some other was, other is for knowledge, someone is for drinking, someone is for God, or someone is for women. It is something like that. This, this concept differs from person to person. So, next, let's, let's jump to the comment section of this video because this is the only one side of the of this video that he is presenting and the, sorry this is the comment that in, as an immigrant i feel like an american dream is still alive people who live in the united states might not see it but compared to third world country that i came from america is still great this person is saying that because he belongs to third world country and America, as we know that America is still better than the third world countries. So absolutely, uh, as we think of America, America will be greater than greater than our country because our country are, are cons constraining, chaining us. And uh, America is known for their freedom, liberty. And the second comment is showing the second way of looking at this video this video like uh, this video doesn't tell us whether the american dream is still alive it simply tells us the most people believe this that is because they are heard it from the people in the media including youtube so what this person is telling that um, that uh, the media is only showing us that there is a an american dream there is something like that but uh, the people who are living in reality or showing that this reality are telling us that no, American dream is not alive. It, it is not something attainable. And another one is saying that dreams cannot be eternal unless you think you are in grasp of infinite superiority. So this is a reference from another Japanese show. So Sukuyomi, infinite superiority is uh, like something take it from like uh, hypnotism. So everybody is under the hypnotism so so american dream is like um, you are in under someone's hypnotism so you think that there is a dream but there is not that is reality role of women 1920 brought some positive changes for women like before that that is to be that is believed that women are only supposed to mind only supposed to be in kitchen home and not supposed to work outside or anywhere like in the um, waiting for god or like the boy is minding sheep and another is minding goat so it is like uh, women should mind children during world war ii men left factories to go to war so the employment for women has increased 
Enti Novel Fitzgerald as a portrait, the female character is foolish and spoiled. As we know that a uh, uh, character of Jordan is not so reliable. Uh, Daisy is a woman expressing disappointment that her child is a girl and hoping that she will be a fool. Now, I, I am glad it, this is the, she is saying, I am glad it is a girl. I hope she will be full. That's the best thing a girl can be in this world. In this world, a beautiful little fool. I don't know why she thinks that way, but psychological perspective says that something might have happened in her past. So she thinks that a girl should be a fool, remain a fool, and that is the best thing that a girl can be. Daisy Buchanan. From outside, she is beautiful and charming, but uh, from inside, she is bored, shallow, and sardonic. Women. When Nick mentioned her for the first time, then as a reader, we feel that uh, okay, Daisy is a his is his cousin, and and, and uh, at the first glance, we think that uh, she is uh, she is wife of uh, Tom Buchanan and, there is, and we don't think that uh, there, there will be any relationship between the Gatsby and Daisy but uh, later in the novel we, we learn that Daisy was in relationship, she, relationship with Jay Gatsby. We also know that Gatsby's action was mere strategy to win over Daisy and that is the, he was throwing constant parties Daisy promised to wait for Gatsby, but uh, she ended up uh, marrying Tom Buchanan, a wealthy young man from aristoc aristocratic family who could promise her a, a wealthy lifestyle. Even after uh, that, uh, she is, she, Gatsby knows that uh, she is married. Uh, still, Gatsby thinks that uh, she is uh, the definition of perfect her aura. Uh, or of charm, wealth, grace that he was attracted when he first saw her. However, as we later we came to know that uh, Daisy didn't fit the ideals that uh, gets me long. She is the but uh, she is the reason that gets gets me uh, is so successful and rich. And uh, this is the, the thing like. Uh, this is the criteria that uh, shows that uh, Daisy doesn't fit the Gatsby's ideal. First, when we see that she is allowed Gatsby to take blame for killing Mart Myrtle Wilson, even though she was the one uh, driving the car, but she, still she allowed Gatsby to take the blame. And as we know that uh, make uh, uh, portrays them as uh, they were careless people, Tom and Daisy. They smashed up thing and and creatures, and they retreated back into their money or their vast carelessness or whatever it was that kept them together and let other people clean up the mess that they have that they have made. At the last of the novel, we see that uh, Gatsby was murdered, and Tom and uh, Daisy left without uh, without any leaving any addresses or attending attending their uh, Gatsby's funeral. Marius Beverly's essay, Scott's Fitzgerald Criticism of America, described that Daisy is a vicious emptiness and moral indifference. This word illustrates uh, Daisy as a cold and cruel character. He continues to describe Daisy as a... Daisy fails to represent the objective correlative of Gatsby's season that we have discussed. This word of uh, Beverly uh, not only demonstrates his, his dislike for the character of Daisy, but also, uh, also paint a picture of how evil and monstrous Daisy's character is and who is a failure of comparison to the character of Gatsby. So, in a way, Beverly is uh, uh, siding the character of uh, Gatsby. Uh, Stallman's essay, The Gatsby and the Hole in the Time, provide a negative 
interpretation of the great guest be saving little room for daisy in a, in a way is siding daisy says everybody is maimed physically or sp- spiritually not woman not woman uh, not a uh, not one woman is without some physical imperfection not even daisy is beautiful stolman comments daisy does not characterize as evil but neither the neither does it glorify her jordan baker there is as we know that he, she is a close friend uh, of daisy and well known golfer and uh, and uh, nick uh, the narrator and they, uh, jordan later started dating she represent modern women one of the new women in of the 1920s sorry it is not jordan baker but it martel wilson desperately uh, wilson uh, martel desperately seeks a better life then one she is living as you know that uh, martel is living uh, with his husband in the garage which is located located in between in between the east valley of the ashes which is in between the uh, east and west egg of new york she is tries she, she tries to escape her social position by becoming mistress of tom buchanan she was ready to marry her if daisy would uh, divorce him but uh, as nick nick says that he knows that uh, tom would would never marry her to tom she just another position and when she tries to assert her own will he resorted um, to vile violence carol versions essay in sexual girls appeared in the book uh, child brides and intruder drawing upon the power of money within the novel version argues that uh, daisy is a child bride He indicates that, that uh, daisy's marriage to tom representative of a role as a property not as a person is a, but as a property purchased and brought in the country supporting pat- patriarchal and capitalistic ideas from this particular perspective version paints a picture of daisy as a property which is a, a object to to uh, tom and gatsby and for gatsby uh, to to were shown at the heart of great guest be are trading buying and selling represented in the symbolic trade of daisy as a, as a child bride uh, version believes that daisy is an icon of desire and demands damnation so daisy is just a objective between two men getsby and uh, tom which is both uh, for both their ego is the most important thing then daisy is a person conclusion so the question might come that why fitzgerald is uh, portraying such a character female character in a negative way so the answer to that is a uh, his personal experience his wife zelda broke her engagement with uh, fitzgerald and because he liked the financial stability and it was not until he became wealthy that he, she agreed to marry him and the another world uh, a celebrity was uh, jin vera king which they dated for a long time but she left him too because he was poor fitzgerald thus fitzgerald uh, started believing in that a money could buy possession women and one of the one of this possession This trait is clearly visible in the character of Jay Gatsby, who tries to win over Daisy by throwing parties, and Daisy does uh, attracted towards the, the huge mansion of Gatsby instead of the Gatsby person. These are the resources.
Mile. What do women symbolize in the great gates life? What do women symbolize in the great gates life? So women in the novel are uh, symbolizing the short mindedness of uh, women like uh, Daisy when first uh, he was in love with uh, Gatsby but uh, she she married to Tom and that when Gatsby uh, again appeared uh, she, then she again started loving Gatsby and then when the final scene came then Daisy didn't choose Gatsby instead he chose his husband Tom so uh, it is like that. So, so my question is uh, your topic is the uh, American dream. Dream. So what is Daisy's American dream in the novel The Great Guest Be? So the simple answer to that would be like uh, wealth. For Daisy, the wealth is everything. Like when she uh, again she meets, uh, uh, she goes with, uh, to Nick's house. Then she came to know that they, uh, Gatsby is living next door, so she visit she visited there, and then she she was uh, very attracted attracted by the mansion and the wealth of the Gatsby. But later later she came to know that uh, Gatsby is not uh, coming from any aristocratic or wealthy background. So Tom is like aristocratic coming from aristocratic background so it is like the word a genetic uh, wealth something like that so daisy uh, wishes uh, so the, her dream her american dream would be money how do you connect this uh, american dream and women together Like uh, for someone, American dream is uh, living a, a better life. So for uh, the women, the, this better life uh, could be marriage or a love or like that.
So uh, my slides are visible on your screens. Yes, and am I? Yeah, I did. And am I audible? Right. So it is the very first day of my presentation in the second semester season, and uh, I have picked up the topic, and it is called the Second Coming, a poem by W. B. Yeats. Important lines with explanation. So, uh, first of all, I would uh, uh, I would like to clarify that I have chosen this topic uh, uh, because we have in Western Bank this kind of uh, short notes that this kind of important lines we are supposed to clear. Uh, that is why I uh, selected this topic and let us move further and see what is there. So, it is the basic uh, uh, idea of uh, the, the, the poem about, about the poem Second Coming. The Second Coming is a poem written by Irish poet W.B. Yeats. So, we have to remember he was an Irish poet and he was uh, he was very much a, a good contributor in the Irish Revolution, uh, which, which began along in the, uh, in 1919 and, and the, the, when the poem was first uh, uh, published in the dial in November 1920 and afterwards included in his 1920 collection of verses Michael, Robert Ash and the Dancer. Uh, now let us. Uh, what is the basic thing about is this uh, that the poem uses Christian imagery. So uh, obviously he was a uh, he was belonging to a kind of religious background that uh, he was a Protestant. So he used this Christian imagery in his poems. Most of the poems regarding the apocalypse. Apocalypse we know that Kayamat Kadin in in Hindi or any uh, Parsi perhaps. And second coming to allegorically describe the atmosphere of post war Europe. So uh, what atmosphere was after the the very first world war end? In the Europe, especially and in the England, especially. Now, the poem was written in 1990s, aftermath of the First World War and the beginning of the Irish War of Independence in January 1919. So, as I told earlier, that as the war end, this First World War end, and the Irish uh, Irish uh, Revolution of Freedom began. And the poem is also connected to the 1919 uh, 1918 to 1919 flu pandemic. So, it is not so in our times the flu uh, corona flu is there, but it, it was there in this uh, time of this poet as well. Uh, in the weeks preceding his writing of the poem, his pregnant wife, Georgie Heidi Lee, caught the virus and was very close to death. So he was quite a near close up, uh, close save of this thing. The poem has influenced Chinua Achebe's novel, uh, Things Fall Apart, uh, which was written in 1958. So Chinua Achebe's uh, novel, uh, the, the title, which is taken, the title is here, Things Fall Apart. It is uh, taken from the uh, uh, poem. In, uh, you can see in the third line, Things Fall Apart, the center cannot hold. And let us move further. What's there? And here are only four uh, noteworthy lines. The very first one is the falcon can hear the falconer. Things fall apart, the center cannot hold. It is the name. We will explain. And the second one is the blood dim tide is loosed. And everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drawn. And the third is the best black hole conviction, while the worst are full of uh, passionate intensity. And the fourth is a quite longer. Uh, somewhere in sands of the desert, a shape with lion body and the head of a man. A gaze blank and pitiless as the sun is moving its slow thighs. So it is the very first line and here I have put a video but due to copyright problem it is not shown here. So I will explain it what is that. The falcon cannot hear the falcon. Things fall apart, the center cannot hold. So the, the bird is not supposed to keep flying in circles. So we have that. Uh, first of all, let me tell you that this uh, Indian concept about this uh, samsar, uh, we can refer to a samsar saga. Uh, it means that it is a rotational uh, uh, cyclical process that coming, going, uh, taking birth and uh, dying and taking birth again and again but uh, in between comes the moksha so it is there and here how how uh, uh, how uh, it uh, describes is that the bird is not supposed to keep flying in circles because they have to come back and land on the falconer's blow so here falcon means the humanity and falconer is the god uh, here most probably jesus christ is there uh, uh, jesus christ but wb Yeats said that the falcon cannot hear the falconer and it has a deep symbolic meaning he wanted to say that the human falcon does not obey their creator falconer. So we are generally uh, expected to obey our gods or whatever they have told in this religious scriptures. They are moving away from the path shown by the creator. So when uh, when somebody is not following the religious dictums that even uh, that are followed in the scriptures, then we call the person uh, uh, immoral or something else like that. You are not a good person. So we. Keep, uh, we keep uh, taunting that person by calling them evil and all the things. That is not good negative, but it cannot be case at all. Uh, people only do hypocrisy, do politics of lies. People kill people together, commit heresy in the name of religion. Sciences second their faith in God and they compare God with science. Now what happened that we know that uh, origin of species came in, in Victorian age by Charles Darwin. Yeah, then... Uh, then uh, people started questioning the existence of God and then Frederick Nietzsche came 
uh, John Lockhart came, all the philosophers were came and they questioned the existence of God because nobody before that was doing that because there was a fear, not of the God, but my, uh, most fear was of the community. Suppose if I question the existence of God, then this people is going to kill me. That we have this witch burning and all the things, even in the Western world. And the most obvious answer is a day. If you figure, so here referred to as the government that were prevalent in the time that it was not able to seize the war. The war happened. The, now the video came. Now let us see if okay. So it is not able. Okay. Now the second uh, line is the blood dim tide is loosed and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drawn. So what is the blood dim tide? So it can be referred to as the war or the blood that is spilled uh, 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 during the war. And uh, it can also be referred to as the uh, the blood, uh, the blood of the uh, diseased ones who were uh, who were under the influence of this uh, uh, 1990 to 1919 flu. Now we cannot uh, we cannot fail to remember Dr. Elizabeth Houtka. She is an associate professor of English at the University of Richmond. Mentions Yeats' poem "The Second Coming." In so she wrote a book that is viral modernism, right? In 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 2019, in very recent year, she wrote a book. And in the sixth chapter, that is named as apocalyptic pandemic. So I have all hyperlinked this. You can tap on that, and you will get to know what is there further. And so uh, she writes that uh, we will re we will not read the whole uh, paragraph, but we, uh, some major keywords. That in November 1980, at the height of the pandemic's deadly second wave, WB Yeats watched helplessly as his pregnant wife Georgie struggled to fight off the virus at the rented house in Dublin. So as I told you earlier, this blood dim that can be referred to as the disease one's blood. Uh, as Yitz's wife, Georgie was uh, suffering from this disease and Yitz was a, a kind of uh, very much an error uh, beholder of this happening. So this reference might have dropped into in this poem by him. So it is the things that now we get to know about this blood dim tide can be referred to as the war's blood or the deceased one's blood and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drawn. So now what is the ceremony of innocence? Innocence here means the speci uh, pacifists, those who do not want war those who do not want to fight in the world they want to peace everywhere in the world so it is the ceremony of innocence is drowned now see in this blood dim tribe so there are so much blood there is so much blood and now these people are not going to listen the pacifist and they, they just want to show this glory of the blood and this uh okay the best black hole conviction and the third the third line is the best black hole conviction while the worst are full of passionate intensity intensity so a tide red with Blood is released and loosed over everything, suggesting massive violent deaths, as I told, as in war, not merely water. This tide drowns bodies as well as innocence itself. So it is. Uh, it was the breakdown that after vulgar people's uh, faith uh, in humanity was shaken, that there is nothing like God, nobody was coming to save us while our people were dying. So uh, that is what brings the Nietzsche in the picture, that he calls we have to be human minds rather than relying on the scriptural message that uh, this Mayuri was talking about this yada yada hi dharma shiglanir bhauti bharat abjithana va dharma shiglanir bhauti it means that you are relying on God that God will come and do all the things he will establish the dharma if dharma does not mean a religion it means the duty the order of a duty that people are doing so uh, it it gives that uh, uh, it rather it our uh, we, we should not rely on this uh, thing and, and we should not stop uh, 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 amending the things in our society it is quite contrary. The idea, very idea, is quite contrary to the uh, Frederick Nietzsche's Ubermensch, the Superman. Ubermensch, in, he, he writes in this Thus uh, Prez uh, Zarathustra, a book in 1883. So uh, we have to see that. So the uh, not merely water, uh, this tide drowns bodies as well as innocence itself. It washes away purity. In its wake, wise good people are reduced to self-doubt and uncertainty, while the worst of people becomes passionate and presumably powerful. So here, who are these worst and, and, and uh, worst people and passionate? These are nothing but these dictators. So we know that, suppose, uh, let, 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 let me take an example of Russian 1917 revolution, that Lenin came and he, he established the new government. He uh, dethroned this uh, Tsar Nicholas II, and there was it was the end of monarchy in Russia. So uh, he was expecting to see here, uh, it is the book, another book, the, From Dictatorship to Democracy. It is by Jean Sartre. He writes, if the fall of one regime does not bring in a utopia, rather it opens the way for hard work and long efforts to build more, more just social, 
economic and political relationship and the eradication of the other forms of injustice and oppression. So it means that uh, suppose any, uh, let us take Russia in, in, in example, the Russian uh, the monarchy was failing out. Now it does not mean that we have to establish another one, but uh, we have to create a just social, economic and political relationship. So instead it happened, uh, it, it went wrong, I think, uh, and then dictators came. So we, if you also remember Absalom and Ecatable John right? And he says that uh, these kind of speeches are made by this uh, propagandist uh, dictators that he says some truth was there, but they has been viewed with lies to please the fools and the puzzle all the wise. So it was, we can take the reference of that. Uh, let us move ahead. So this, the best like all conviction means the pacifist, nobody was listening to them because they only, uh, they all were inclined to go. And the worst are full of passion. It means they were, the dictator was, were in the, in the vague to fight the things. It is the video, but now due to this copy tag, the problem is not happening. And the fourth line is somewhere in the sands of the desert, a safe with lion body and the head of a man, <coughs> a gaze bling and pitiless as the sun is moving its slow thighs. So how uh, how we can imagine that? So you can see the image and another one is the Sphinx, the ancient Greek Sphinx, which is supposed to guard the uh, palace or the pyramid. But Yitz wrote in the introduction to his play, I began to imagine around 1904 as always at my left side, just out of the range of sight, a brazen winged beast which I associate with laughing, ecstatic destruction, nothing that the beast was afterwards described in my poem, the second coming. So how this reference is come? How this reference comes in this poem. So he was imagining the beast while writing the poem. And later on, we can compare this uh, Sphinx, ancient Greek Sphinx, which was supposed to guard the pyramid. But if we compare that, Sir was telling that it is not uh, quite, uh, uh, there is no similarity between these two because here you will find a dystopic vision. Here it is protecting thing. So there is no similarity in the facial expression as well. So it is not worth comparing to. And it is critical overview. Uh, in his contemporary on the collected points, W.B. Yeats, a Norman, Norman Jeffery, so he's a critic, a Norman, a Norman Jeffery suggests that the falcon represent man, represent civilization, becoming out of touch with Christ, whose birth was the revelation which marked the beginning of the 2000 years of Christianity. So it was the fall of man from the religion, it was there. And two other critics, Donald Davy and Harold Bloom. So Harold Bloom, we all are familiar with, I think have suggested that trying, uh, tying the poem to Christian apocalypse is not as an automatic a necessity as the poem itself suggests. Devi remarks the early drafts uh, that the Christian apocalypse features not a second but a first coming. In Yeats, Bloom refers to uh, uh, early drafts of the poem. So, uh, by and large, we can say the, uh, this uh, vision of this uh, this uh, lion, the, the, the shape, which, is, uh, which has the face of lion and the uh, face of human and the body of lion, so it is the face of the science or it is the representation of science, science which will shake the things outside and it will create a dystopic vision that we have robot films in our dystopia that robots will take control of the humans and they will be the master of humans. So it is the, it can be seen in that way also. Now it's the conclusion in an age of shopping reversal, its theory of historical cycles, uh, day and night, night and day forever. As you once put it right, rings true. The only consolation the poem offers is the knowledge that for one reason or another, every generation has felt the same apocalyptic sudden. So every generation, why? It was 100 years. It was in 1919. 100 years ago, they were having war and this uh, pandemic flu. But uh, now we are considering this uh, 2020 as we had also Corona, right? Corona in our, the whole world. So we thought it is the NS Mirabilis, but it turned out to be NS Horribilis instead. So apocalyptic sudden that each did 100 years ago. That's why it is a poem for 1990 and 1939 and 1968 and 1970 and further 2001 as well. And today and tomorrow, things fall apart over and over again, yet the beast never quite reaches Bethlehem. So he never reaches this beast. <laughs> In his definitive edition of Yeats' poem, Richard J. Phenomen, this is very uh, prominent critic, Richard J. Phenomen quotes Yeats' own notes. So what, what Yeats has written, so he it is, quote, it is quoted by this Richard J. Phenomen, so this is, these are the words by Yeats. The end of an age which always receives the revelation of a character of the next age is represented by the coming of one child to its place of greatest expansion and of the other to its place of greatest contraction. The revelation that approaches will take its character from the uh, uh, contrary movement of the interior child. So child, it will keep spinning. It will serve as drawing this, uh, this uh, drawing on the board that this, this will keep on spinning. And in every spin, there will be a new uh, character or uh, 
watershed movement which can change the course of the whole age so here is the bibliography and that was all about my presentation So, oh, Mirav, my question is, uh, how would you describe the ceremony of innocence? How would you describe the ceremony of innocence? So, Nila, your question is that, how would I describe the ceremony? Basically, what, what is the ceremony of innocence, if I'm not wrong? So, ceremony of innocence is the meetings, or rather, as far as in my opinion, I can say ceremony of innocence. It is that we have more pacifists rather than more monger people. Let's suppose there are 10 people sitting in an assembly or rather NATO uh, assembly that out of 10 there are five people who are in favor of war and out of five who are against of war. So it is not the ceremony of innocence. It is the dichotomy that five are for this and five are for that. But ceremony of innocence as far as I my understanding goes there can be nine people who are against war. They are pacifists and one only one who can be supporting like a dictator kind of uh, people they, uh, they won't go. So it is the ceremony of innocence, perhaps according to me. So if there is anything you want to add, then you can. Anybody uh, here sitting? Okay. Third question. Yeah, yeah, do ask me. Hold on. What is the connection between democracy and the second coming? What is the connection between democracy and the second coming? Like you described the totalitarian, tyrannical. Yes, so your question is that what is the connection between democracy? So first we have to know about democracy is a concept. It is an abstract concept. And the second coming is a poem, written poem. So here the democracy, it is, uh, democracy cannot be seen in the whole poem. Rather there is no presence of that. And this uh, dictator kind of things, uh, uh, people are presented in the poem. So there is, I think there is no connection between democracy. Perhaps there is a lack of democracy in the poem. Why? Because poet wants democracy. And there is no uh, democracy in their age because dictators were ruling in the name of democracy, in the name of government. Or if you want to add anything. Okay. My question is what kind of mythological creature is featured in the poem Jack Second Coming? So your question is obvious in that, okay. So mythological creature, we can say that sphinx or the lion, uh, shape a uh, face of a man and body of a lion. As Mayuri also described, the Nursing Mautar is there. So it is the mythological creature. It was mythology of Greek. So it is called Sphinx in Greek. So they were supposed to guard the pyramid where the kings or queens uh, uh, are sepulchered or buried. So it is the mythical, uh, mythological creature and indignant birds is another reference coming I mean, that uh, indignant birds. So who they are, we have to know about that. It is the key. Satisfied or something else? Or is there anybody who want to ask me anything about the poem? Okay. Uh, shall I stop, sir? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, next. Second last huh, for today. Make camera a little bit lower. Hello everyone. So, 
was paper presentation and my presentation topic is William Butler Eight's Poems. William Butler Eight's was in was in the so one of the prominent uh, figure of the 20th century literature. He was then born in 13 June 1865. He was the Irish poet, dramatic and dramatic and play prose writer. He was it was the it was begin the writer as the first publication as a first publication of the lyric brief lyrics up applied in Trubid University review in 1883 he was won the nobel prize of literature in 1923 wb eight's writing style is a parrot pet as a portrait he spoke out about the severe nationalist policy of the time earlier work of drama show has love for arrest legends history and myth wrote poetry about nature and his homeland island wrote poetry play short story non fiction and fictions i say i presenting the wb eight poems is not a part of our syllabus is the famous poem by uh, wb eight the esther 1960 is the historical and political commentary esther 1960 is based on the 1960 esther rising in ireland protesting against british ruler many of the rising leaders were later arrested and executed for treason the poem end with one of the its most powerful line all change change utterly a terrible beauty is born second was meru meru described the illusion of civilization and the importance of unbreaking on the spiritual journey meru is meru is a member of a pupil of central cape kenya relating to the meru of their language mountain meru is a mystical and imaginative mountain which is referred in hindu jain and buddhist texts the other one is the the slotens child is the lost of innocence best poem for all time its major theme is the lost of innocence as a child grow up written in 1886 the stroten child is one of his work that is strongly rooted in irish mythology the poem tells the story of a human child who is enchanted by a fairy land fairy tales world which is more full of weeping than be than he can understood this is my conclusion we find almost all culture and traditional as well as the history of irish people in his poems he was very much attracted on the his own culture and history this is my resource reference thank you
So, uh, Sangeeta, my question is that uh, can you find any religious allusion from any one of each poems? Any religious allusion? No. Yes. Yeah. Uh, So my question is, do you think that uh, it was uh, influenced by any mythology or occult? Yes, it was influenced by mythological. Uh, there's many poem are nature and mountains uh, about that and many use are the mythological views. Am I audible? Yes. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, good evening, everyone. Today I'm going to present uh, uh, my presentation on uh, an analysis of the decadence of Tom Buchanan. In uh, 1925, uh, the, uh, the writer Fitzgerald uh, launched uh, one of his sharpest and most devastating uh, novel uh, with uh, a character named Tom Buchanan. Uh, so, who is uh, Fitzgerald? Uh, Fitzgerald was an essayist, American novelist, short story writer, and screenwriter. He became the first to turn the national spotlight upon his generation as leading authorial voices. The Jay's age has literally style influenced a number of contemporary and future writers. The, uh, the Great Gatsby is con considered as one of the best American fiction novels. It is a first person narration uh, narrated by the Nick Carraway. Uh, here is the slide of uh, the, the brief summary of uh, the novel. And this is the, uh, the what is the S, East Egg, Egg and West Egg. And now who is the Tom Buchanan? Tom Buchanan who belongs to East Egg was an, uh, we can say, uh, long island millionaire with a with a pivotal character we can say a critical character and uh, by the by the uh, character of tom buchanan uh, fitzgerald is trying to show the uh, is trying to show what is upper class uh, family and this is the uh, satire on upper class we can say that jay gatsby who is a protagonist and who belongs to west egg 
is a self-made person who is uh, who is known as most hopeful person ever and the comparison between tom and jay gatsby from movie review uh, we uh, we watch in a, our a class uh, jay gatsby is a classical example of self-made man where is tom is an arrogant uh, political bully and uh, uh, laced with racism and sexism Gatsby is a dreamer, constantly invoicing a better future for himself uh, and focusing on what possible rather than what is practical. Whereas, to uh, uh, whereas Tony Tanner points out that Buchanan is a no more grounded in or significantly related to ancient American history than Ga Gatsby. Uh, Gatsby is a fabulously wealthy young man living in a Gothic mansion in West Egg. He is famous for the lavish parties he throws even Saturday night, every Saturday night, but no one knows where he comes from, what he does, or how he made his fortune. And Tom Buchanan is Tom Buchanan's wealth and character are instrumental in understanding the limits of Fitzgerald's fascinating and riches and also the reasons behind the attraction that laid Malcolm Polly to denominate some of his works within the category of the romance of money. Uh, character, uh, character sketch of Tom, uh, Tom and here is a video of uh, a character sketch of Tom. Uh, sorry, somehow I'm not able to play this video. And, uh, what is Dickens, uh, and who, who, uh, which characters are uh, giving the Dickens from the novel is uh, also Tom Buchanan. But other than Tom, there is uh, another one who is Daisy, who is uh, who is showed to readers as a sweet young lady towards whom reader can feel empathy. But however, uh, she, when she has an option to choose between. Jay Gatsby and Tom, he chooses uh, uh, stability and uh, lavish life rather than love. And other thing I, I would like to say is Fitzgerald's, uh, what is Fitzgerald, why Fitzgerald uh, tried to uh, give more attention to Tom Buchanan is he said uh, in one essay to Hemingway that riches have been fascinating me. Uh, unless we are combined with the greatest charm and distinction and the expression and satisfaction he expressed that I suppose uh, the character of Tom Buchanan is one of the greatest character I have ever made and the way Nile said uh, that Zelda uh, his wife uh, from him uh, from her he was rejected and th this shows that uh, Fitzgerald had an idea of upper class society that's why he brought uh, Tom Buchanan as a as a, a critical character. Here are my resources. Thank you. So Vachalata, my question to you is that, do you find any similarity between Tom Buchanan's racial and sexist approach with or and the prevalent time people? So do you find anything similar between Tom's, uh, uh, you can say, a mental approach of racial and sexism to the prevalent time people? Can you compare between them? Uh, I think I can connect this to uh, uh, prevalent times people with uh, money that if you have money, you can do anything. Like Tom Buchanan was inherited rich person, and that is why he was uh, he was born. Uh, what can we say that he was born arrogant or bullious person? So that that, that is why I can say that Tom Buchanan's racial and sexy, uh, sexiest approach uh, are still uh, in uh, prevalent time. So, uh, if you are given any 
एनी सीरियल कैरेक्टर और एनी मूवी कैरेक्टर ऑफ हिंदी सिनेमा बॉलीवुड यस ये ओ यस इज इट ओके या सो इफ यू आर गिवन एनी टीवी सीरियल कैरेक्टर और एनी मूवी कैरेक्टर टू कंपेयर विद दिस टॉम ड्यूकन एंड देन हुम डू यू कंपेयर विद एंड व्हाई I think uh, not movie, but I am trying to compare uh, him with Iago from Othello. Yeah, I find him. He he don't wanted to be. He just wanted to prove himself as a. He was also a critical character in uh, Shakespeare's. So like that, uh, like that character, Tom Buchanan is. And I would like to compare Tom Buchanan with Iago. My question is: How is Dickie Dickinson show in the guest, uh, Great Gatsby novel? How is uh, Dickie Dickinson uh, show in the Great Gatsby novel? Uh, well, Dickie Dickinson is the word that shows. Uh, we can say. Uh, Tom Buchanan as a antagonist. He was not a protagonist in the novel. He is an antagonist. So what uh, bad things he has carried from uh, from start from the start phase from the novel to the end is a uh, is a decadence in the great uh, great Gatsby. Confusing. That. Uh... I found your topic as the analysis of the decadence of Tom Buchanan, right? So we find decadence of Jay Gatsby, or somewhere around Nick Carraway also. But how how do you find decadence in in this character of Tom Buchanan? So perhaps in the end of novel that Nick Carraway says they both are returning in their uh, glassy world, but the world of very high living. So do you find any decadent element of this uh, in in the character of Tom Buchanan? Oh, yeah. How how can you say that it is the decadence of okay. yeah? I think uh, the movie scene uh, where uh, uh, Tom provokes Gatsby to uh, to uh, to catch out his anger. That is how he is trying to uh, do the situation towards him to get Daisy. That was maybe a example of his decadence. Seven o'clock now. Okay, very quickly. Let us have a brief feedback huh, to what you have done. Okay, so Janvi and others. Many still are citing from study material sites, which we are suggesting you avoid citing from study material site. Use it. from there move to the better quality resource we already have done a workshop on how to reach to qualitative resource on internet so and uh, now you have to ask your friends if you are absent in the workshop uh, that how to reach so try to move in that direction towards qualitative resource rather than citing study material uh, uh, sites uh also janvi needs to improve language so do some rehearsals a uh, few others also uh, janvi nehalba niti uh, sangeeta yes you all needs to need to improve your speech also so do a rehearsal put a camera do your video recording listen your video recording some day i will ask you show your video recordings of your rehearsals or do audio recordings and uh, do practice otherwise there won't be any improvement the way you have come after your ba you will go after ma also without any improvement there you might have seen many students uh, making presentations in the annual day 
and as such there is no improvement which comment we have to make because even all these things were suggested to them but they have not worked on it so the simple mistakes they kept on uh, making in the present essence and even in the final day also they keep still keep on making the same mistake so if you don't want to do that uh, not down all these things uh, and start working uh, and you will have to work on all these things on your own now all these things are that like language capabilities linguistic skills you will have to concentrate and work nobody is going to now do spoon feeding or teach you everything uh, in this aspect zil presented on modernism so a good concept clarity was given uh, 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 in her presentation then nilay also when you refer to the source any concept you take and go to the dictionary so you are going back to the root that from where is this concept coming so what is modernism what mh abraham has written about that that is cited then nilay also referred to dictionary to see what is american dream so that is uh, a better way of doing uh, research writing or research presentation going back to the root and from there building everything uh, narration character symbols were studied eh, as a part of modernism khushbu uh, also need to improve yeah? you also have to work on uh, several things to improve the things mayuri we suggested few things uh, about improvement that you can move to lots of things are there around your topic so why not select the qualitative work on indian philosophy and the, uh, this uh, modern literature nehalba uh, we suggested you uh, need to improve uh, a few things about speaking and other things answers also you have to give in a more convincing way uh, whatever questions are asked niti uh, presented well content was good enough but somewhere uh, in speaking in a better way you need to improve nilay was a good presentation uh the video and also how people are commenting on that video that was a good point to study uh, that what people are commenting that is where uh, lemon also is uh, giving their point of view so not only the experts but even the comment this is the time where everybody has got a voice and they all are speaking something and it is very interesting to study all of them even if it is uh, not very thought provoking or it is a thoughtless thought but still it is very interesting to study what people are uh, thinking so that was a good point but how do you connect is still a problem uh, there's both the things uh, there so uh, how are women taking an advantage of the american dream american dream if it is all about getting rich then women will have their own way of getting rich uh, it is by love or marriage with rich people and then you try to uh, climb the ladder of american dream so that also they are doing so uh, how far they can be criticized feminist will come in defense of women that if when everything is decaying uh, everything is on decay then women are also taking advantage of that uh, in in moving in that way. so why only blame a women uh, in in a time of an american uh, dream where everybody is moving towards quick bucks uh, quick richness then women have their own way to move in that direction uh nirav presented well okay and you also avoid study material site citation needs to work you just have given the links of website that is not the proper from any angle <laughs> mls citations do not just put the link of the websites okay? and uh, a font also you have to work on larger font it should not be too text heavy that it is it is becoming unreadable so you have to manage your fonts on the slides otherwise anybody someday will say you don't know how to make slides this is too heavy slides uh, there so that you have to manage there the questions were also very interesting nilay asked uh, uh, a good question on ceremony of innocence that what does it mean so ceremony of innocence is uh, the word coming from christian ritual of baptism a little boy in a church there is a water there and then the drop of water you wash little kid and then you do baptism of a little boy that ceremony is known as ceremony of innocence now here when the falcon cannot hold the falconer 
Now this ceremony of innocence also is blood tied. So you are doing that ceremony with blood. So that is that imagery that uh, Yats is bringing. Uh, that even that is now stained with blood. Whose blood? The the uh, the authoritative government, the dictators, the way they are on massacre. Uh, that is what is has uh, stained uh, even the ceremony of innocence, which is blood deemed uh, in the tide of uh, uh, blood deemed way. So that baptism is referred there. Another question also was good, the democracy and this poem. Right? So how do you connect? Now, one very oft quoted sentence can be used to see that. Right? That is this sentence that the best lake all convictions while the worst are full of passionate intensity. Democracy is all about this. So many people, so many people what? But so many people are worst and they are full of passionate intensity. The best are few and they are still lacking conviction what to do. And so what the large number of people will do will what for a dictatorial governments. And then there is the havoc that people have to see. And along with that, there are many other references also that how the democratic values and other things are under question by second coming also. Uh, Sangeeta, uh, as I told you, need to improve a few things. Vachalta uh, presented well, but references are not given. Only one reference is given. So you need to collect a few more sources. And you can say that in, during that time, decadence uh, was in the air. So all the characters are representing decadence. Either it is Jay Gatsby or Tom Buchanan or any other women, all are representing some form of decadence uh, there. So everybody uh, is representing that time uh, where things were going terribly wrong. And the America was celebrating that thing. So we see the times. At the time and again, it happens that even the wrong things are celebrated uh, in a gala way. <laughs> but then when the time passes, we say, well, this was the decade of decadence. And this was a terrible time. That is what history records. If so many people are celebrating something, it doesn't become good. The worst and the bad things still remain worst and the bad in history. That is, that is what gives us historical sense to study. What are we celebrating today? And are those celebrations really be recorded in the history as something great that these people are doing? Or it will all label all of us as the, the age of decadence? In one or the another uh, way. Okay, okay so uh, we end our uh, day here. This uh, wait for a few minutes for some instructions that I have to give uh, here. Okay. I'm, I'm ending this uh, uh, live here.